So we're at NEB 2019 at the Blackmagic booth and we're going to talk about DaVinci Resolve and the new G2 camera. Red Shark's NEB coverage is brought to you by NewTek, G Technology, Blackmagic Design and Adobe. So Greg, a lot of new features have been announced for DaVinci Resolve 16. Yep. It's a major update. Absolutely. Um, while we can get into the f all the features of it, which yeah. is going to be a very long video because you did a lot of improvements on the Absolutely, on the yeah. on the software, um, it might be interesting to talk about what does this actually mean for creatives. For sure. So there's some changes, obviously, and some upgrades we've added across the grading tools um, within Fairlight, within Fusion, again, and we're showing those on the front of the of the show. And there's more information, obviously, on the website around those. But what we thought is really essential, and obviously one of the big announcements we wanted to talk about around Resolve 16, is how we've approached the editing tools. Now we're really proud of what the Resolve guys have done over the past number of years and made. Um, the edit tools inside of DaVinci Resolve incredibly comprehensive, really intuitive and fast and, and really capable of any kind of edit process. But what we also started to look at and realize was that maybe the edit tools and the processes inside of nonlinear systems actually are a little bit over the top. You know, can, they, they are comprehensive and you know, they're very creative and they, they allow you to be and create whatever you want. But sometimes maybe stripping those back and looking really about the efficiencies and the work that we can do adds a lot more to the software. And that's what we've announced with Resolve 16. We've introduced the cut page. And what the cut page allows us to do is, is produce two different ways and different ways of kind of thinking about the edit and how we approach nonlinear systems itself. So I'm gonna show you in the software and show you. So the edit page, as I say, really, we haven't changed it. We haven't stripped anything back. You can still use the edit page if we're building long form documentary, if we're creating longer narrative you know, features and short films or even up to Hollywood standard. This is kind of the area where we're used to as nonlinear editors and, and sort of content creators crafting and taking our time. Maybe we would sift our bins, organize our media. If we've got long shooting ratios, generally how well you organize your media here might take hours and hours, but it pays as you start to build and craft. Yeah, especially in long form stuff, you kind of want to make yeah. sure that everything is in the right bin and that everything is like exactly. Yeah, there. and Resolve's got some great tools in there like smart bins and some of the media management tools but they're not necessarily always needed. So if you go into the cut page, what we've actually done is we've, we've looked at the efficiency of the edit system and the processes and thought about how editors work differently and the project might demand that. So if you're working really more where time and the speed that you can edit is at demand, it might be you need to get items to air in a, in a kind of newsing area, or it might be that you're working in commercials in a corporate space where you really need to work fast for the client and get content delivered. It could be like you guys, you're shooting content around the booths and you're going to have to go back to a hotel room, cut stuff and try and get it up as fast as possible because you're breaking news about the show. So when we look at the edit page and we thought about what we could change, first of all, we wanted to think about the speed. We wanted to think about how do you approach as an editor when you need to work quickly? What steps and stages in the edit page are really redundant for those processes and for those projects? So first thing we did was simplify the UI so it's a cleaner working space. We've got an area where I can review clips and I can actually go through if I wanted to and still scrub through my clips and quickly review and decide what shots I want to use. If I do want to look at a list view, I can go in there and I can still see metadata and make those decisions, throw away clips that I don't want to. But what we have here is just a single viewer and we share it between source and timeline. And in here I can still scrub, I can mark my in and out points. And if I wanted to, as I can with most nonlinear systems, it's just drag and drop to a timeline. What you'll also see though down here, let me just drop the audio a little, is the timeline actually works in a dual timeline process. And this is great for how we can then view the project. The upper timeline shows me my entire project duration from beginning to end. So I can see assemblies and I can see where there are cuts and the rough timing and the sequencing of my entire project. The bottom timeline has a fixed playhead and the, audio, the video track runs through it. So I got a thumbnail reference. I can see my cut as it's happening and I can grab either of these areas and jog through and actually find where I want to work. Yeah, because a lot of times uh, like in the in the normal like editing view, yeah. you would like have to kind of make sure that you zoom in, you zoom out. You're looking at it. You're, yeah. You have to play back, etc. Keyboard commands for moving in and around. And exactly. also, we've built some really great contextual tools about how you can edit on the timeline in Resolve. So you know we can go up to cut points and I can roll or I can ripple within those. 
But in the edit page, I do need to zoom in and zoom out because those contextual tools are either too fine and you can't see that, or they won't appear in certain zoomed yeah. processes. So this is really about bringing everything as quickly as we can and, and being able to view as we want it to go. And I say we can jump through source and view. There's options in here to override, insert, and append. You can drag and drop. We can trim on the timeline. I can double click within trim points and open up a really nice trim mode editor so I can actually then re-time shots. And again, I can see the reference and the change as we go through it. Likewise, there's some intelligence tools inside of Resolve if we wanted to add transitions. So as I'm moving through the timeline, I don't actually have to be on exactly the right cut point. And if I wanted to, I could just quickly drop a dissolve and it knows exactly where it wants to go. It knows that I'm thinking about this area because my playhead is near it, so it drops it in there. If I don't want to dissolve, I can just turn it back to a cut. If I want to change the dissolve, I can open it, trim it quickly, play through and carry on. So I'm not going into a transitions bin, I'm not having to drop shortcuts, so I can just add quickly yeah. and move through it. Yeah, which is great for refinement work, but yeah. then in a lot of the times, if you have like a uh, fast turnover project, yeah. you kind of, you know, you want to do like, yeah, dissolve just very keep quickly. Just keep, it just keep it moving. Yeah. Exactly. There's also, I mean, one transition that's here as well. A third option is like a soft cut. So when you may be doing a talking head, and you're just going to make those cuts and just transition quickly between the subject, but don't change the frame, you can drop a, a smooth cut in there and just get to work straight away. A couple of other great things we've done as well is we've added something called source tape. And what source tape does when I select it is it takes all of my clips that are within my bin, and I can see them here as a clip view individually. Source tape drops them into the viewer and appends them all together. So when I scrub through this timeline, it's every single one of my clips, one after the other. It's almost like a master tape from old linear days. And I can run through, in and out, append, in and out, cut to the timeline, and just build my, my idea really quickly. So there's loads of tools around the cut page, which is just about efficiency, it's about speed, it's about how do I review my content, mark what I want on the timeline, quickly refine it, and then take that away. So in certain jobs, you know, the news agency stuff, items that are probably going up online, certainly built around high-end commercial, where the pace of the work demands that you get these items done quickly. Everything inside the cut page is built around speed and processes and directly what the editor needs to see. And it will give you new opportunities, even if you're not in that fast workflow, to yeah. basically sketch out first. Yeah. Like absolutely. in the edit, and like even on longer form documentaries, kind of figure out what you want to do in this viewer, yep. and then go back or or go next to the, like, to the edit of course. page and then start refining. Well, obviously, we, we know and we've shown over the years, one of the massive advantages of Resolve is the way we've built pages that respond to Fusion for VFX and Fairlight for digital audio, edit and grade. If we're saying that, you know, if you want to craft and sift and go through lots of rushes, like a documentary project allows me to manage that, maybe I stay in the edit page. If I wanted to cut some content quickly and then place it up on my YouTube channel or I'm cutting quickly for a client, I could do the cut page. The third way of thinking about it is, say we're going to work on a, on a feature or we're working on some sort of narrative-driven project. I could build my narrative structure in the cut page. I could look at a scene or a sequence, take my shots. Maybe it's like a talking heads and there's a couple of multicams to cover it. I can use the source tape to quickly cut that as a multicam, build a narrative block, and then go back to the edit page and fine tune it put in cutaways, change the transitions, alter my dialogue, mix some of the audio then in Fairlight. And it's almost the cut page can become the first stage in a full craft of processing. So it's ideal and built around fast processing. We've got some awesome export tools that allow you to go straight from the cut page, say, to YouTube. But likewise, it's still part of the ecosystem of Resolve and is one of the first steps in the stages in post-production that you can use and utilize as an editor. Yeah, and what we didn't discuss about was, was also, it's basically very obvious in a way, but like you can have different roles in your crew yeah. go through the different, almost like the different tabs on the, in, in like yeah. Resolve, in just the one program. Yeah, I mean, the power that we have in Resolve as well, and it's, it's, G, it's leverage of GPU performance for obviously some of the effects we put in there, but also the re rework we did on the engine, the CPU performance in 15 is true in 16. You can resol run Resolve 16 on a laptop, you could be working on set, you could pull your dailies, and you could start crafting an edit together and make sense of what you've shot in the day. You know, you could start to look at pickups or reshoots, or then pass that away as an assistant onto somebody that's back in the post-production facility to craft it and finish it. Which is getting more important anyways, because now you see that post is slowly, and post production kind of merge into one yeah. in a lot of 
different production, not only in the high end, but also like... Yeah, and it's next to say the DIT tools and the on-set tools we have on the color side, where we've got Resolve Live, we've got obviously the ability of LUT creation, LUT management and color management on there. It's, we're introducing ways that, you know, potentially, you could start to even think about how you build, edit and create on-set or after you've shot. Um, in that way as well, and certainly for guys that want to craft longer form, it's a nice process step. Um, but always going back, ultimately it's about that speed, it's about the efficiency, and getting what you can get cut on the timeline as fast as possible. So. Great, so now let's quickly move on to what you've done to uh, the Osa Mini Pro yep. G2. Yep. So we announced the camera um, a few weeks back, and the camera's coming out into production, so they'll be with people shortly that have pre-ordered them. Um, and effectively what we've done is the Ursa Mini Pro 4.6K was an incredibly successful camera for us and introduced a lot of people to the performance of our, our processes, our color science and really what you can achieve with a camera that's so affordable. But we looked at the, the, the way we could develop the camera system and ultimately it's the same camera body so if you've got, you know, you're familiar with the interface, the use, Blackmagic OS for the, the menus and the control of the camera, it's all the same. The viewfinders, batteries, all the accessories are all built around this ecosystem now. But we fundamentally changed um, the video processing and the sensor system. So it's the same sensor design, same pixel pitch resolution, same dynamic range, but it's all about getting higher quality off that sensor. So it's better color reproduction and color uniformity. Um, it's actually a faster sensor, so it's less than eight milliseconds in response at full 4.6K. So that means any motion in the frame is better rendered. We, we're working towards, obviously with CMOS sensors, you want to avoid skew entirely if you can. So it's an incredibly quick sensor. But what we've also been able to do with those incremental improvements in it is introduce slow-mo. So we've got higher frame rate capability. So at 4.6K, we can shoot 120 frames. If you move into 4K Ultra HD, you can do 150. And if you shoot at 1080, you can take that up to 300 frames a second. And we know creatively that's great. A lot of people want to shoot with slow motion, creatively use it in, you know, you see a lot of in sports, in music, uh, certainly in film, where you can create really fantastic sequences by just concentrating the viewer into slow motion, revealing action. Um, and it's a brilliant tool to add to the camera that already had a ton of features in there.